A very good morning to all viewers on Planet Tech Mahindra today. We have the pleasure of the company of Professor Didier Clotin from Ecole Centrale Paris. Professor Didier is going to be the Dean of Academics for Mahindra Ecole Centrale. And uh, he is going to talk about his journey so far, his experiences at Ecole Centrale Paris, and his plans and dreams for Mahindra Ecole Centrale going forward. Just a quick uh, bio on Professor here. He chairs the Department of Mechanical and Civil Engineering at Ecole Centrale Paris. And uh, he leads the research group on wave propagation in random media at Ecole Centrale Paris as well. So he's a man of great responsibilities and great experience. And I'm sure we have a lot to learn from listening to him speak about Ecole Centrale Paris as well as Mahindra Ecole Centrale today. Professor. I now hand over the reins to you. Okay, thank you and uh, good morning everybody. Uh, let me first uh, introduce uh, myself into a uh, little bit greater details. Uh, so I'm um, a former um, an alumni of uh, Ecole Centrale Paris and I had my PhD also at Ecole Centrale Paris. And uh, after that, I went for a research career at the French uh, National Research Council for uh, about 10 years. And then I became a, a professor at Ecole Centrale Paris. And uh, I'm also a part-time professor at Ecole Polytechnique. And uh, as we see, uh, Ecole Polytechnique and Ecole Centrale Paris are the two main school of engineering uh, in France. And I may have uh, introduce a little bit later what is this strange French system having school of engineering on one side and university on the on the on the other side. Okay, uh, so uh, apart from that, uh, my research career and my research topic are on earthquake engineering. Basically, I have a civil engineering background, but my colleague in civil engineering uh, tends to describe me as a rather as a mathematician or as a theoretical person. And which is in fact gives you a, an idea of what we think of what is important for an engineer having a strong engineering background, but trying to apply this to very uh, uh, specific uh, problems. And my concern is to protect people from uh, the the earthquakes, and that's why I re my research field is in that uh, domain. Okay, so uh, maybe yeah, professor, and uh, we at Mahindra are thrilled and excited about this high impact synergy between the Mahindra group and Ecole Centrale Paris. And you yourself have spent a long time at Ecole Centrale. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we would like to hear from you, how is uh, academics and life out there in the Ecole Centrale Paris? So the, uh, we are at Ecole Centrale Paris in uh, the, the French system, which tends to be uh, integrated in the European system as opposed, in fact, to the Anglo-Saxon, not opposed, but uh, different from the Anglo-Saxon model. Well, since when you talk of an European model, you can think that Great Britain is in Europe, but only marginally in Europe. And the, the Anglo-Saxon model is a bit different. So the idea of the Bologna system is to have a three plus two plus three system, three years for a bachelor, two years for a master and three years for a PhD. And so we have at Ecole Centrale uh, an integrated five-year program corresponding to the two bachelor years and the two master years. And the, uh, the two first years are done outside uh, Ecole Centrale in what we call prep schools. And from that prep school, there is an entrance exam at the end of this prep school. And from this uh, entrance ex exam, we take the, uh, let's say, 2% best students coming to uh, Ecole Centrale. And that's the, the, the basic idea. And once they are at Ecole Centrale, we have a multidiscipl multidisciplinary uh, program. So they start with math and physics, and then they are trained in all engineering branches. And then finally, during their fourth or fifth years, they can get specialized in one given domain. But what is important is that in Europe, we don't have the notion of a specialized engineer. You are an engineer and you can work in many different fields. And if you look at your uh, career of a standard engineer, 
it's not only the case in France, but it's also the case in India. You can think that being a civil engineer, you can have to work after that in computer science, you can have to work in electrical engineering, and there are no clear uh, barriers between fields wh once you are in an industry. And one goal in the industry is to try to put all these specialization together to offer your uh, clients a good service that covers all these branches. And that is the aim of uh, the Ecole Centrale Education. Thank you, Professor. And coming back to yourself, I have a question to ask you. Uh, you won the Young Researcher Award from the French Association for Earthquake Engineering recently. Yeah. Could you tell us about it? So we uh, developed a, a computer program uh, aiming at uh, ensuring the, the safety of uh, large facilities and especially dams and nuclear power plants. And uh, this uh, computer program, which is uh, based on a theoretical method uh, I won't detail here. I don't want to <laughs> be <laughs> Uh, rude uh, with uh, the audience, uh, but the, the idea is that this uh, computer program is used to assess the safety of French nuclear power plants owned by the major electrical company in France, uh, which is uh, EDF, Electricity of France. And so that's why I had that uh, award, uh, which is related to uh, putting science to, the, uh, to help the industry to assess the safety and at the end not only the the industry but the um, the people at the end because the people want to have safe nuclear power plants and we have to do our best to assess that safety and science is a part of that at uh, the mahindra group uh, professor we have uh, the these three tenets that combine to form the rise philosophy uh, accepting no limits alternative thinking and driving positive change. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, curiously, and uh, uh, perhaps it was destined, there is a strong connect with the leader, entrepreneur, innovator paradigm of Ecole Central Paris that mm -hmm. MEC has adopted as its positioning line. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about uh, what these three words that leader, entrepreneur, innovator combine mm -hmm. would mean to a prospective student if we were to enroll at MEC? Yeah. Okay, uh, I may first co come back to this uh, idea of uh, either rise and uh, leader, entrepreneur, innovator. It is at the DNA of Ecole Centrale, since Ecole Centrale has been created uh, 200 years, more than two around 200 years ago, and at a time where people were believing strongly, very strongly, in progress of mankind, and in believing that the industry and the science can benefit a lot to the progress of humanity. And uh, I find in the, uh, in the motto of the Mahindra Group, Mahindra Rise, exactly the same feeling that we have to go above our limit and try to uh, increase our knowledge and increase the, uh, the services we can provide to, to, to the society. So, uh, coming back to the, uh, the motto of um, leader, entrepreneur, innovator, uh, one uh, amusing uh, remark is that uh, uh, prof um, President uh, George W. Bush mentioned that entrepreneur is not, does not exist in the French language, whereas entrepreneur is a French word Lord. at the basis. And we have very, very great entrepreneurs at Ecole Centrale Paris. And some of them <coughs> I could quote are, uh, for example, Blériot. Blériot was the, the first person to cross the channel on an airplane. And uh, he crosses from France to England. And it has some meaning for us that it was from France to England and not from England to France. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also uh, another entrepreneur, uh, famous entrepreneur, is uh, Schlumberger in the um, petroleum industry. And we can think also of Peugeot, the Peugeot cars. We can think of uh, Michelin, the tires. So, and of course, the most famous one, I think everybody knows, is uh, Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower. So this man was uh, an alumni of Ecole Centrale Paris, and uh, he not only designed the Eiffel Towers, but many of the bridges, uh, many bridges in, in France. And I think these people 
not only had the, the knowledge, the technical and scientific knowledge to do things, but they were able to convince people that this, you can make it real. You can build such a high tower at that time. It was just incredible. But so you not only have to be an innovator, but you have to convince people and to put people on your side to be able to build that. And that is the uh, leadership part of the program and the entrepreneur part of the program also. And um, since, well, engineering to, for our point of view is more than just science because with science we only develop the reasoning part of our brain. But at some stage, we all know that everything cannot be decided on rational point of view. At one stage, what is extremely important for an engineer is the judgment. And one question we have is how, well, we can easily train people uh, doing math mathematical developments and doing physics, and, but how you can train judgment, engineering judgment. And since a good choice in terms of innovation, in terms of entrepreneurship, is based on a good judgment. And training that judgment is so, a sort of our secret at Ecole Centrale Paris, and it's a sort of mixture of a strong technical background and uh, exposure to industry, exposure to practical problems, project activities, and that's, that's why we uh, want to um, train entrepreneurs, leaders, and innovators. Thank you, Professor. And uh, now that actually makes me think of another question I have for you, uh, which is about the industry academia collaboration at MEC. How are these going to impinge on each other? How are they going to interface with each other and uh, make sense to the students joining us in the near future? And uh, the, the leaders have been stressing that we are not just creating engineers at MEC, but we are going to create business leaders who can take on global challenges. So how is the industry academia connect uh, going to enable this for the students who are going to be joining at MEC? Just to, to give you uh, a few figures, uh, at uh, Ecole Centrale, we have uh, 180 regular faculty, full-time faculties uh, on the campus, but we also have more than 1,000 faculties coming from the industry. Some of them could come only f to teach for two or three hours, and some of them will come to teach an entire course. And so we have a very strong connection at the academic level in the teaching between the, uh, um, the industry and the academic world. And in the academic world, who you have uh, basically the, uh, the faculty members are strongly committed to research. And research is another point, specific point at Ecole Centrale, where we have very strong links with the industry. Usually you can think of research, and it is the case in, in India, for example, in IIT, where um, faculty members apply for grants from the government. And so they do very, very good research, but which, a research which is, uh, in fact, inspired by the uh, research grants and so by very academic problems. Whereas us at Ecole Centrale, we want to we discuss with people in the industry and based on their problems we try to analyze these problems with a research point of view but so the idea is not to provide technical services is to do research but research on specific problems which are important with our challenges for the the industry and that's uh, why we uh, that's the way we want to do research and that research will uh, lead to very high level publications. So we, there is no compromise on the level of research in terms of academic uh, quality. But the idea is to change the, uh, the subject. And the subject is to take the, the subject from the industry, from the, the problems of the industry. And so we believe that we can bring this here in India because uh, we feel, well, my feeling is that uh, we have two separate worlds. On one side, we have the uh, um, academia with very theoretical problems in terms of research of very good quality. Uh, I can testify for that. But on the other side, we have the industry 
asking for some help on some very difficult problem, asking for some different point of view. When you are in the industry, you have challenges on related to budget and you cannot often offer time to look at the problem in a different way. And it's what we can offer at uh, ECP and at MEC. Okay, now let me uh, come back to familiar territory for you. Uh, you have joined us, uh, joined MEC as the Dean of Academics. And uh, what are your big plans for MEC? How do you propose to take your charter, your agenda forward for the benefit of our students? Okay, so the, the idea here is to uh, implement our uh, innovative uh, five-year program, engineering program, with a multidisciplinary background. And when I say multidisciplinary, it's not only because students will be exposed both to electrical engineering, computer science, mechanical engineering, or civil engineering, but they will be exposed to physics, math, because we believe that we need a very strong mathematical and physics background uh, to be able to put together all the different fields. But we'll have also a strong program in terms of humanities and social sciences, because if you want to uh, train leaders and entrepreneurs, you, they have to understand how people and how the society works. And in the humanity part, we have a strong emphasis also on art because having innovators, having creators, you have to understand what makes the, the creation at the beginning. And art is the place where creation occurs. And on top of that, we have uh, an increasing um, stream of um, courses on uh, let's say, business and management uh, topics. So this is only one less than one, it's one sixth of the program on business and management. We have basically one third on engineering, we have one sixth on uh, basic sciences and one sixth on um, humanities and social sciences. Sense. That's the, the idea. So we'll start the first year with uh, 180 students. The goal is to reach uh, more than 400 students per batch. So, well, my job is trying to implement this to uh, have a, to build the, the teaching team, the, the faculty members, to put them together and to try to make them work together and not work in their specific field. And uh, so, because trying to cover all the subjects, you have to uh, emphasize on all the possible connection between the different specialization. And so for that, I have to put faculty members together to work together. And we will start this year, well, we'll start tomorrow, <laughs> actually, because I have a, a meeting with uh, the already recruited faculty members um, to work on a very specific course for the first year called Introduction to technology and society, and uh, the aim of this course is to engage all faculty members and all the students on the great issue on the 21st century. Instead of trying to think of a problem starting with uh, the very specific part and how you can solve that equation or how what is this physical principle at the beginning, is to come with, to start with a large picture of what is our world, what is the problem I want to address and how I can effectively address this problem. And this is the, the idea of this first course. So it gives a good example of what type of education we want to implement at MEC, starting at the very beginning. And the, what the students will have to produce for this first course is a documentary on this subject, a 10 minutes documentary, and we'll have a price ranking the documentary among the students, addressing one specific issue on the 21st century. That's a wonderful, great way to start, actually. You know, the best place to start is at the very basics, and yeah. uh, you're addressing that issue here. And uh, you, your conversation has given me another idea, another thought, another question to ask you, Professor. You did mention about faculty and your interactions with them uh, to develop this new kind of a curriculum. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more on the kind of faculty members that you have chosen and uh, you have hired, engaged for uh, MEC? Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll have uh, um, two uh, 
basically uh, three types of uh, faculty members. Uh, <coughs> the faculty members coming from the industry, as I already described for uh, ECP, but these faculty members will come on board only uh, for the fourth and fifth year. Some of them could come from the uh, first, second and third year, but at the beginning we started with a uh, full-time faculty with a very strong uh, research background because we think that high-level courses have to be backed on a research activity and uh, we also think that the reputation of an institution has to be based on their achievement and the achievement of the, the faculty members in terms of research. So we have selected and we were very um, lucky in being able to attract very young and um, promising researchers coming from Switzerland, coming from um, Singapore, coming from the US, coming from France. So we are very happy with the, the people we, we hired up to now. And uh, so now the we have very good uh, uh, material in terms of, of faculty and we'll, uh, we have to, to help them to uh, disseminate this uh, Ecole Centrale spirit, trying to think without the boundaries of their uh, own discipline, trying to, to share ideas together and to the benefit of the, the, the students. And could you tell us about the faculty-student ratio? So we'll start with uh, very uh, low, uh, well, very low student to faculty ratio. Which is very good, actually. <laughs> yeah, which is very good. <laughs> and uh, since uh, we'll start with less than 10, which means one faculty for 10 students, whereas the standard requirements are around 1 to 15. Okay. And it's because we, want, we don't want to, to spoil the, the first year. We put an emphasis of not admitting too much students because we want to guarantee the quality because we want to build a high level institution and a high level institution is based on quality, quality on faculty, quality of students. And we want to make sure that this first year will be extremely successful so that we can start at a very, very high level in terms of reputation. That's the, the, the basic. Thank Idea you, Professor. Yeah. And uh, uh, now coming back uh, to Tech Mahindra. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're aware, Tech Mahindra has uh, a wide industrial presence and you know, they're a, a acknowledged uh, business house and they, with IT solutions and products and services that encompass most of the leading industry verticals from aerospace defense to banking financial services. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and every year Mahindra Group and Tech Mahindra do engage a lot of engineers from across the country you know, to uh, augment their uh, human resource uh, base. And uh, not just from the resource perspective, also from the technology perspective, they engage a lot of engineers, skilled engineers from across the world. Uh, how do you envisage uh, the MEC and Tech Mahindra Connect as a mutually beneficial arrangement going forward? Well, uh, I believe, well, the, the idea is not to make MEC uh, special uh, recruitment uh, office of Tech Mahindra. The students will be free to go wherever they want. But we strongly believe that uh, Mahindra is extremely interested in the type of engineer we will, we will train in uh, Mahindra Ecole Centrale. It's uh, simply because, well, I had a, a discussion with uh, somebody in France, telling him, well, you know, uh, uh, I may go uh, and um, in um, in India, and uh, he he told me, well, in India they have incredibly good engineers, but the problem is when it comes to project management, and so uh, I believe that there is a need in the main drag group. Main, the main drag group has already extremely great engineers, very uh, competent engineers, but. Uh, w we believe that we can provide the main drag group with some well-trained engineers able to conduct large projects, able to be the, the, the leaders of their teams and bringing innovation in the main drag products. Since the, uh, the challenge now in the industry is not producing a lot, 
but it's producing new products which can attract a larger uh, set of clients. And so we believe that uh, we, we can provide such engineer to the main drag group, but not only to the main drag group, but also to the French company being in India, and there are a lot of French company being in India, and also to other industry in, uh, in India, and not only the, the main drag group. Absolutely. In fact, it's been said that there are more than 700 uh, companies, French companies with presence in India, and I'm sure uh, they would all be uh, more than willing to engage uh, MEC graduates going forward? Yes, of course, because, um, well, they, when you are a French company, you have your own culture and the French culture is different from the Indian culture and often you lose a lot of time trying to understand what the other party wants. We all want to go in the same direction, but simply we don't use the same word, we don't use the the same approach to go in the same direction and having people able to understand both cultures is extremely important for a large group as uh, Air Liquide or EDF or Dassault, if Dassault is to uh, assemble the, the Rafale in, in India, for example. And having engineers able to understand the French culture, able to come in France and to discuss with people in France it's extremely important and I think that the, the market is huge since a lot of French companies try to uh, find access to the Indian market and try to install factories and uh, develop products in, in India. And uh, talking about cultural immersion, Professor, uh, I would like you to talk a little bit about the French language and its implications and importance. Okay. Uh, there. Recently, the uh, I don't know. Um, I think the the UN uh, Commission uh, made a um, a study saying that French will be the second language language in the world in 2015, and this is basically it's not due to uh, France. Uh, I did the the best I could in having five children, but uh, well, this won't change the global figures of, of the world, but uh, this is mainly due to uh, Africa, because we, we all know that Africa is developing very rapidly and half of Africa is speaking French. You can think also of Canada speaking French, not only in, in France we speak French, but also in Belgium and in Switzerland. So the French influence is not that low and if you want to have access to those markets, especially in North Africa or in um, West Africa, then having a French background is extremely important, not only for the language but also for the culture because we, we believe that the French culture, culture has influenced strongly several parts of the world and so that's why we, we believe that uh, having French as a possible language of expression is important also for an engineer. And that sounds more than a reasonable proposition to us. And uh, now we come, come to the last question of the session, Professor. I'm sure you must be uh, eager to answer this one. What is your message to the students who are going to be joining us soon? Our admissions are going to start on the 6th of April and the IITJE mains exam is going to be conducted on the same day. And uh, we want you to convey a message to the students who are going to be joining us soon. Okay, what I would say to, to the, uh, the students, well, just try. Well, it's, it's a bet, but we have backed this bet on a very strong academic background, a very um, renowned um, group, the Mahindra group, and we believe that we can offer you something which will make you very different from other engineers on, on the market and will have the doors open. You, you can think of MEC a, as a gateway to, uh, to the industry, not only in India, but also in Europe since uh, the, the degree, it's uh, uh, an Indian um, diploma, but it will be accredited by the, uh, the French Commission for uh, Engineering title, uh, we call that, and which offers you the opportunity to work all over Europe. 
because once you have the accreditation of CTI, you can work as a approved engineer all over Europe also. But it's not all only all over your Europe. It's only it's all over the world. So if you want to have access to the entire world, don't hesitate. Come and join MEC. Thank you so much, Professor, for your kind words and your insightful conversation with us. Thank you. And uh, that's it for this session, dear viewers. Let me just remind you before we sign off to log on to www.mahindraecolcentral.edu.in or follow us on Facebook and Twitter, study at MEC at Facebook and Twitter. Thank you and have a great day.